Welcome to another demo of the Boomi platform. In this demo, I will be taking you through a custom flow which I've set up to tackle a fairly common uh, NetSuite business case, that of fetching a CSV file from Amazon S3, passing it and posting it to NetSuite. So let's just run through the high level overview of this use case. So what's the problem? I have dubbed it pick, parse and post. We have a test scenario where a bank needs to fetch a PGP encrypted CSV file from an S3 bucket daily. That's the pick part. We need to pass this file and process it depending on what transaction type it is. That's a field in the CSV file, which, which we'll see. This is the pass. Transactions need to be posted to NetSuite as journal entries. This is the post. In reality, you could post it as any record type that you want. In this case, we would be using journal entries. This is just a preview of the CSV file structure. See, so we have an ID, date, transaction date, a type. This is the column that we will use to distinguish uh, which accounts we will use in the journals, an amount and a description. So in this tutorial, we'll, we'll be covering the following aspects of Boomi. So we'll be using the Amazon S3 REST connector to connect to S3 to list the file contents and get the contents of the files. We will be using a business rules shape to filter the file list based on the last modified date. So in this case, we would like to always retain whichever file has been placed on the day. So whichever file has a last modified date equal to today's date. We'll be querying NetSuite using the NetSuite connector for some accounts, making use of the add to cache uh, boom shape to dump some uh, accounts to memory and, and, and avoid using multiple lookups. We'll be using cross-reference tables. These are essentially multi-key lookup tables to store some uh, business configuration. We will be using the data process shape to decrypt the PGP encrypted files, parsing the CSV file into a flat file profile, also using the data process shape mapping the CSV file to the XML profile required by the journal entry uh, creation. We'll be using map function to handle uh, all date formatting. And finally, again, using the NetSuite connector to post the journal entries to NetSuite. Without further ado, let's jump right in to the process. So here, Here you can see the entire process laid out. I'll first just give a high level overview of what is happening and then I'll dive into each shape individually and, and explain each one in, in a little more detail. So we have an entry point, uh, try catch block. So anything that, that goes wrong past the try path would be caught in the catch block. In reality, you can do a lot with that. In this case, we're just throwing the error. So the first thing we do is we make an external request to Amazon S3 to list the contents of a bucket. This is the bucket that I'm using in this test, PPPSH. And as you'll see, the Boomi operation is configured to look in this uh, object. So. That's done very easily. It's just a, a next, next, next wizard. So you can configure the Amazon S3 connector to point to whichever bucket you'd like to read from. So we fetch the list of files. We then filter those file keys based on some rules. This is why we're using the business rule shape. In this case, we've decided to retain all the files that have a last modified date matching today's date. This is all happening in the business rules shape. So the business rules shape has, it forks off down two parts. So you have records which would have been accepted and records which would have been rejected. So we're just discarding 
all those files that do not meet the criteria we've set up in this business rule shape and then we proceed with the accepted ones. We come to a branch shape. A branch just allows you to perform uh, a number of actions sequentially. So the first thing we do for the accepted file that we have retained, we have an external call to NetSuite to fetch a list of accounts based on certain filters which we've set up and we're dumping them to memory. This is this will be used uh, in in the journal creation. So we fetch the accounts, dump them to memory, and then we proceed on to branch two, where we have another connector shape to S3 again. This time, we're not listing the contents of the bucket. We're actually fetching the contents of the file which we've accepted. So the parameter is actually the key of the Amazon file that, we, that we'd like to read from. So this is what this connector shape is doing. So we read the contents. We then encounter a decision shape. This is determining whether the contents of the file we've just read is PGP encrypted using a regular expression that inspects the content for a specific pattern that matches to the PGP encryption signature. So this would again have a, a, a fork if it's if it if it's the condition evaluates to true, it means it's encrypted and we need to decrypt it using a data process shape that Boomi provides out of the box. There are no external dependencies whatsoever. You just set up your certificates, private key, public key, and Boomi decrypts it for you. Nice and easy, very simple. So if it's encrypted, we decrypt first. If not, we proceed untouched. So this is where we arrive to this other data process shape. This is where we're passing the file contents according to a flat file profile which we have set up. This this is essentially the structure of our uh, of the file that we want to process. So we set up a flat file uh, profile. You could simply import the CSV file itself, and Boomi will automatically create the profile based on that. So this is what you see here. You just upload the CSV file, and Boomi recreates the structure for you. So we're passing the CSV file based on that profile, splitting it into individual lines, which we then map. So from CSV to an XML profile, and eventually the XML profile that is required by the NetSuite connector shape to actually create, in this case, journals. So this is why we have this connector shape. Action is create, and the operation is to create journal entries. So that's the process from a high level. Let us dive into the, the individual steps. So the first uh, shape of interest here is this Amazon S3 REST connector shape. As mentioned, this is where we connect to the S3 bucket to list the files that are, that are in this bucket. So as with all connector shapes, you need a connection which we've set up already using the AWS credentials, access key and secret key. The user needs to have sufficient IAM privileges to manipulate S3 contents. So connection is set up and an operation. In this case, everything is pre-configured for you by Boomi. The operation is set up. The object type is, is a bucket. In this case, it's the PPPSH uh, bucket, which we're using in this test. And the filter criteria is this prefix field, which corresponds to, to the S3 file path. And we're actually saying, please give us all files that match the static value of uh, bookings all. So in our case, this is the this is the prefix that all our files are arriving uh, with. So we will pick up essentially all the files. You could choose to come up with a convention and, and narrow that down, but in this case, we're just picking up all the files. So we expect that we will retrieve the entire uh, S3 bucket contents, and we then proceed to filter them using the business rules shape. So there are a couple of things going on here. If we configure it, you can see that we have one rule, 
This is called date format and compare. We're essentially taking the current date, which is being generated through a boomy map function. We're taking the current date and comparing it to the last modified date of each file in the S3 bucket. This is the response profile from the S3 list. We're using the last modified date to compare it to today's date. And uh, if that is true, we're proceeding and we're discarding it for all the documents that fail uh, or, or evaluate the false. So in this second the input section, you could set up all the, let's say, fields that are going to be used in your uh, comparison. And you could either use a, a field as is, or you could process that field using some function that you set up. And this is what we've done for these two date fields. So if you have a look at our map functions, you could see that we have two. One is called format current date, which takes no inputs. It just uses the get current date from this section. So we get the current date and we pass it to this date format function, which is accepting the current date in this format and outputting it in this format. And we map the result to, to the output. So this is essentially formatting the, the, the date returned by get current date to a format that uh, we'd like to, to use for the comparison. So that's the first function. And similarly for the format last modified, we're taking the last modified date from S3 as an input and doing essentially the same thing, formatting it to the same date format. Date formatting is another extremely powerful uh, and, and convenient aspect of the Boomi platform. So our inputs are the results of running these functions on the input fields. In this case, so we've, we've selected to output the function of the, uh, the we, we've opted to select the output of the format current date function and the output of the format last modified. And since the last modified, as I mentioned, is taking an input, we've selected the input from the S3 response profile. And using those here, we say is the last modified equal to the current. And that is our condition. So over here, I've simply broken the, the link, which gives us the possibility to test the first couple of steps uh, without executing the rest of the process. This, this could be convenient if you just like to stop at a certain point and avoid unnecessary processing if you you just like to inspect up until a given stage. So let's run a test and see what's happening with this. That's done. All the shapes that have this uh, green background means that they have been actually executed. So you see clicking on the business uh, rules shape, which is one step past the external call, you could, you could see which results were returned by this process, which, which was the connector shape. You can see that we have four results. This matches the amount of files in our bucket and inspecting each one. This is the S3 list bucket uh, response profile that Boomi sets up automatically for you. So you have the key, the last modified date, and, and some other uh, parameters. So we pass those results again to the business rules shape, and this is where we perform the comparison that I just demonstrated with the dates. And if you inspect the logs, you can see exactly the, the values that are being calculated and compared. So you could see we have the function get current date. This is the raw input or the, the raw output from the current date function. At some stage, we are formatting that. So you see
this is the formatted current date output. So it's 18th of June 2022 in, in that format. We then said we would do the same formatting on the last modified. So this is the last modified input from S3. We format it in the same format, this is the 17th, and then finally we compare. So here you can see the actual comparison. And this evaluated to false, obviously. So for each document that reaches the business rules shape, you can inspect what's, what's actually happening. If we click on the rejected route, you can see that we have three files. So that, that means that three files were actually discarded. One was kept. We cannot see it here because we've broken the link. But if you were to inspect the logs again, you would see that the first file, which was modified on the 18th, evaluated to true. So that is the file that we will process. So we accept one file. This would be the, the, the file of the day. And we proceed to the branch shape. So the first thing that we do is we have a call to NetSuite. This is again using a connector shape. Again, connector shape uses a connection. This has been pre-configured using token-based authentication. Very easy to set up. And the operation in this case is to query accounts. So the account record type. And our filter is the account name. So account name contains a certain keyword, which we pass as a parameter. So in this case, give us the accounts that have a static uh, value of test in the name. So this will return essentially all accounts that have the word test in the account name. This is how I've uh, set up the accounts in, in, in my NetSuite account as part of this test. So we fetch all the accounts related to this um, business process and we dump them to the cache. So if we look at the cache profile for this add to cache shape, you can see that we are saving this NetSuite account names query response profile. This is the response profile from the account operation. And the, the index that we are using is the account name. So we've chosen to store them and, and eventually retrieve the accounts by the account name. This is more human readable, so it's easier to, to actually uh, work with the accounts by name rather than internal ID. And also internal IDs tend to vary from one, let's say sandbox account to, to a production account. So it's a lot easier to work with the account name. It's also better for anyone who's reviewing the business logic to understand the significance of the accounts that are being used in our process. So we fetch the accounts and we store them to the cache. We then use the file which was accepted. So the name of the file which we accepted at our business rule shape. And we pass that file key as a parameter to the next uh, AWS S3 call. So this is where we read the actual contents of the file key itself. Again, connect the shape, the same uh, S3 connection which we set up for the previous uh, shape. This time it's a get. And uh, again, we're passing the file key as a parameter. This is all set up for you by by Boomi, so very, very minimal uh, configuration that needs to be done here. And we read the file contents. So again, I could choose to break the link here and test to see how this is working. This has completed. So we saw, we inspected the, the first bit already. Let's have a look at the account 
list that was fetched by this connector shape. So we click on the following shape and we see that we have five results. And not surprisingly, we'll find that in the account name, there is the word test as we expect. So we have deposit asset test, interest test. So, so these are all accounts that match our criteria. And we're storing them to the cache again in this format using the account name as the key. And you see why in a second. So that's the first thing that we do. And then we make the call to S3 using the get object operation to fetch the file contents. The input to this shape is the file key that we have set, accepted, which matches on the last modified date, so the 18th of June, which is today's date. And the output uh, is the file contents itself. And if we view that, you can see that this is the PGP encrypted contents that we have read from this uh, file in S3, which is essentially this file. So we expect that we should first decrypt the file before proceeding. So our decision shape should definitely evaluate true. So what do we have configured here? We're saying check the first value, which is the current data that we've just read in the previous shape and see if it matches this regular expression. This is just saying, do the words begin PGP crop up anywhere in the file content? If that's the case, then we can be sure almost that uh, it is an encrypted file and attempt to decrypt it. Again, PGP decryption can be done in this data process shape. You simply set up uh, the PGP decrypt as a processing step and provide your private key and you're good to go. So decryption is quite painless. And uh, let's see how that looks. That's done. Okay, I was expecting to see the decrypted contents here, but possibly that would only be available in the next step. So let's rejoin the link and let's say, let's break it over here instead. So the input to this data process shape should be our decrypted content. And in fact, that is the case. So this is the CSV file from the 18th that we have just decrypted. And you can see that we have transactions with dates spanning the month of June. So 16th, 12th, the 11th, the 14th. We have two that are of transaction type interest and the rest of uh, type deposit and the rest are just the amounts and uh, the note for each transaction. So decryption is working fine. Then we said that we need to parse the CSV rows again according to the flat file profile which we have set up. So this would split um, the CSV file by line uh, depending on the structure of the flat file profile which you have imported and configured. We then proceed to map and prepare each CSV line in the XML format that's required for journal creation. So the first thing that you do whenever you want to map from one profile to another is use a, a map shape. 
we've called this uh, CSV to XML. And you see that this is the flat file profile that I've just mentioned. And we want to map it to an XML profile that is nearing what it should look like to uh, create channels in NetSuite. But we, we'd like to do a couple of things along the way. So the first thing that we do is we format the date. OK, that's fine. And we map the result to this trend date property on the temporary journal XML profile. And most importantly, for this use case, we determine which account names we would like to use for each transaction type. So I mentioned that we have deposit and interest as a transaction type. And we need to fetch the double entry accounts for each type. And we're doing this by using a cross reference table, which I've set up over here called accounts mapping. This allows you to create as many columns as you want. In this case, I've created three columns. One is the transaction type. One is called account type, which is debit or credit and the account name, which we'd like to select uh, and use in, uh, in the journal. So for essentially for the deposit type, we have one account for the credit, one account for the debit, and for the interest type, we have one account for the debit and one for the credit. These names are actual NetSuite account names. So they match to the key that we used uh, to store the account list to the cache. So in using the cache, we avoid actually having to make a lookup to NetSuite for every account internal ID uh, per, per transaction, basically. So we make one request, we fetch all the relevant accounts for this business case. In this case, I decided to filter on the name test. The list could be as long as you want. And then we use this mapping table uh, to, to determine the right account name. So we do that then by using this map function, which is a, a cross-reference table lookup. So we look up the table that we just uh, created. And using the type, which is coming from this column here, we say, OK, if it's uh, type deposit and debit, then fetch the account name that's relevant for that combination. If it's a deposit and it's a type credit, then fetch the, the account name that's relevant to that. And this is where we actually map to the, to the destination profile. Our journal is going to have two lines, one for the debit, one for the credit. And so we map uh, based on that configuration. These are instance identifiers that are set up on this uh, temporary XML profile. So this is used when you want to target a specific um, occurrence in, in a list of elements. In this case, we have, again, just this line element. And we're using one line for the debit and one line for the credit. So we first do that, and then we just map to the NetSuite journal entry create request profile, which is what's expected by NetSuite for, for actually creating the journals. And this is where we then look up the document cache to fetch the internal ID of the selected accounts using the account name that we just mapped in the previous step. So this is where we actually save requests to NetSuite to look up internal IDs. Over here, I'm using, I'm, I'm, I've chosen to, um, to choose the account or, or to specify the account by the internal ID of the account. I haven't tested whether it's possible to actually use the name itself, in which case you would avoid the need to specify the internal ID. In this case, you probably need to use the internal ID, so, so that's why I've chosen to do it this way. So let's see how that looks before actually making the create request to NetSuite.
that's completed. So here you see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines which correspond to the eight entries we have in this latest file from the 18th. And we've mapped the CSV structure to this XML profile. So it's the general create. And we have actually, this is this, the output of the step before. So this is the output of the CSV to temporary XML profile, where we selected using the cross-reference table, the account names that's, that are required for each line in the general entry. And then in the next step, that's where we actually map the internal ID, which you could only see if we were to rejoin this. So let's run the process from start to finish and see whether our journals are being created. that has completed. If we click on the end step, you could see these are the responses from the NetSuite connector shape, indicating whether the documents were created successfully. This, this was indeed the case. You get the internal ID of the journal that was created, the same for the rest. And we can just verify that. So this is one of, of the journals that was created. And if we view it, you could see the journal with the amount and the double entry that was specified in our um, cross-reference table. So that's working. The only thing you'd need to configure then is to run this process on a schedule, so daily or, or at whichever frequency you'd like to execute the process. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. You could extend it with email alerts to inform the necessary stakeholders of the results what, uh, if, if things go wrong. But I'm truly impressed with, with the flexibility that this Boomi platform gives you. Uh, extremely powerful, very quick to set up fully fledged uh, integrations, if you were. So I'm, I'm officially a huge fan of, of Boomi. Just one last note also on the, on the canvas itself. So in my opinion, this is also serves as documentation for the integration itself. So rather than having to redocument, let's say the steps of certain integrations using, I don't know, some flowchart syntax, things like Lucidchart, for example. This, this canvas is, is the documentation for your integration. So it's simply a matter of getting used to the different business shapes and the kind of logic that they represent. But essentially, anyone from the team could be onboarded to how certain integrations are working just by looking at this flow. So for the external calls, you also have an icon indicating which uh, platform you're connecting to. You can label each step with meaningful um, names to, to further embellish each, uh, each shape with, with, with some information. So this really enables developers and administrators alike to be on the same page as to how certain integrations are working. And in my opinion, also, it gives administrators the ability 
to set up fully functional integrations without running one line of code or without writing one line of code. So it is immensely powerful. So hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next video. Thank you.